It's April Fool's Day, and every April Fool's Day, we hold an annual duck hunt in our office because the only quacks you're gonna find in our office are rubber duckies. Now, I, re I really want to dig down to the why behind why chiropractors sometimes are called quacks or frauds. And it really comes back to not only uh, controversy, but a bit of intrigue and also history of the American Medical Association where the Supreme Court actually ruled them guilty of slander. So. Let's talk a little bit more about that controversy. The media feeds on it. Millions of patients love their chiropractor and appreciate our unique and safe approach to recovery from pain. Significant research suggests that chiropractic is the safest approach available for relief from neck pain, back pain, headaches, and other musculoskeletal complaints. Now let's review that research and discuss how organized medicine from the American Medical Association, Medical Association has contributed to the myth that chiropractic care is dangerous. So I'm gonna start with a short review of history. In the early 1960s, the American Medical Association, or the AMA, decided to try and contain and eliminate chiropractic as a profession. They actually uh, took to slander with not only physicians, but also the, um, the media. And their plan was to prevent medical physicians from referring patients to chiropractors, preventing them from accepting referrals from chiropractors, preventing chiropractors from obtaining access to hospital diagnostic, in radiology services, and I still deal with that now in 2023. There are some hospitals that will not accept a referral from me to do a CT or an MRI scan on patients. In addition, the AMA tried to prevent medical physicians from teaching at chiropractic colleges or engaging in any form of joint research. They also wanted to stifle other cooperation forms between the two professions. Medical journals were also told not to publish any chiropractic research unless the results were negative. This practice persisted until the mid to late 1990s. The AMA or the American Medical Association also told its membership, such as medical students, insurance companies, and even the general public, that chiropractic was an unscientific cult. That was until 1976. There was five chiropractors that actually filed a lawsuit against the AMA and 20 other medical specialty organizations as co-conspirators for violation of the Sherman antitrust laws. After 15 years of litigation, the U.S. Court of Appeals stated that the AMA tried to destroy a competitor. There was evidence showing that they were motivated by economic concerns. The court found that the AMA had actually concealed evidence showing that it was guilty and it was caught doctoring documents. The AMA was also found guilty of systemic long-term wrongdoing and has not acknowledged that of its law had, did not acknowledge its lawlessness. So following uh, that ruling, the court actually enforced a reversal of the AMA's policy. But after that, the damage was already really done. Tiny splinter groups formed with the intention of labeling chiropractic as a quackish cult. Their methods mimicked the earlier AMA suppression, suppression tactics. They wanted to create doubt about the quality of chiropractic education. They wanted to mislead the public into believing that chiropractic claims all disease is caused by subluxations. Though these groups hide behind the noble claim they want to protect the public from unscientific practices, their true motives are pretty transparent. Their sole intention is to suggest that only allopathic traditional medicine is well supported by scientific research. However, that's just not true. Um, there's been many research studies that have been published um, within the past 10 years showing chiropractic benefits for a number of different conditions. In addition to that, there was an editorial that was in a highly esteemed British medical journal titled, Where is the Wisdom? The Poverty of Medical Evidence. BMJ's editor, Dr. Richard Smith, recounts a lecture he attended with a renowned health policy consultant, Dr. Dave Eddy. Eddy found that after doing significant research, only about 13% of medical interventions are actually supported by solid scientific evidence. And only 1% of the articles in medical journals are scientifically sound. Why is that? Because most of those articles quote from other articles, which makes unsupported and unfounded claims. So this April Fool's Day, don't be fooled. 
don't believe some of the controversy and some of the um, unfounded as well as unscientific claims that you may have heard in the past. I want you to really look at the new research, look at what we have found in chiropractic care, look what we found in chiropractic research, look what we found by working together, how we can truly help patients. In my office, I have found that the best way to get patients results is number one, finding out what's actually going on. I take the time in my office to do a thorough exam. I wanna find out exactly what the problem is. If necessary from that exam, if I feel the need that we may need to look at x-rays or do further imaging, I can either do x-rays on site or even refer you out for further imaging so we can find out if there is a disc issue or a herniation or something else going on where we may need to work with other providers. In some cases, in my office, I do a lot of home exercises and I do give recommendations so that we can make sure not only do we get your joints stable, but we retrain the muscles and ligaments so you get long-term relief. But here's what it comes down to. My goal always is results for my patients. So if I have patients coming in that aren't getting the results that we want just from chiropractic and home exercise, I may refer out to a physical therapist. I may refer out to an orthopedist or to a surgeon to find out, hey, would you be a good candidate for surgery? Would that work better to get your results now and then after surgery or even after physical therapy, do we need to look into further cooperative care to make sure that we're getting your results? In many cases, patients that go undergo surgery, after they're healed up and released from physical therapy or occupational therapy after the surgery, they may still need some help with improving range of mobility. They may be some help with reducing scar tissue so they can get their mobility back. And that's what we do in our office. We work with your medical providers so that we give you the best care possible. In many cases, I do offer lab testing in my office. So if you really haven't got the attention that you need or the time spent that you need with your medical doctor, we can also look over labs or even order labs in my office so that we can get to the root cause figure out what's really going on and provide some advice that is founded in evidence so that we can make sure you get to the best provider for you and get the best results as possible as soon as possible. So again, don't be fooled. It's April Fool's Day, but don't you be a fool. Come on into our office. Uh, during the month of April, we are going to be having a duck hunt. So stop on in, grab a rubber ducky, as you can see. They're all over the place. Um, have a great rest of your day and a great rest of April. Have a good day.